Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me here. I'm excited to share some of my favorite neck work with you today. This is the sequence that Chris and I both use for our necks when we're not feeling the best, and it's been really helpful and amazing, so I'm stoked to share it. One of the things to think about when you're working on your neck is not what exercises to do, but how you carry your head and your neck all day, every day. So there's a real tendency because we use a lot of screens and computers to have our heads kind of out in front of us. And I'm sure you've heard of forward head position. Uh, so the fix for that is something that we call head ramping. And it's called head ramping because you're thinking about taking your head from out in front of you and sort of sliding it back up like you're sliding it up a ramp. So if you imagine that you have a cheerleader ponytail, you're going to take your head and you're going to slide it up and back like so. Now, the tendency is when people do that, that they slide up and back and then they stick their chin out anyway. So if you put your two fingers at the back of your head, the back of your skull, and let your head tilt forward a little bit, slide your head back and up and stay along at the back of your skull. And you're not going to be able to look ahead the way you normally do because your chin's going to be kind of tucked because the back of your neck is long. So you're going to have to lift your eyes up if you want to see at eye level. And that's okay because it's good for your eye, eye muscles. And that's kind of what we're looking for position-wise. So you're thinking cheerleader ponytail, pulling your head back and up at a 45-degree angle. And that's a head ramp. Now, the other thing I want you to watch for here and with all network is that when we move our head around, a lot of the time what we're really moving is our chest around. So you want to keep your chest still as you slide your head back and up. And that's what's going to allow you to lengthen and um, improve the alignment of your head and neck is by not lifting your ribs up and not lifting your chin up. So that can take some practice. And I do teach a lot of that in my Take 10 Movement Coaching Program if you decide you want to work on that a little bit further. But for today's purposes, you're just going to be thinking ribs down, head and neck split up, chin slightly tucked. And that's going to help you make these exercises more effective. And it's something you can pull into your everyday life, like when you're driving. Just remember, head back and up, ramping, ribs down. It's going to help you improve the alignment and the health of your neck all the time. So that being said, we're going to start out with some neck cars, the neck circles, um, or controlled articular rotations. And for these, we're going to add a little bit of tension to the situation. That's because it's going to help you feel what you're doing more than if you just sort of do a big loosey-goosey neck circle and allow you to improve the mobility and connection of your brain with your neck. So for this, absolutely, you want your ribs to be still. So you're going to put your fingers right at your collarbone. And I want you to start by creating a little tension in your ribs and belly so that you're keeping your ribs still so they're not moving. And I want you also to think about moving your head as though you're moving through something frozen and a bit sticky, like sticky maple syrup or molasses. So you're creating a little bit of effort. So if you imagine your head being really floppy is zero effort, you imagine your head not even moving because you're holding it so tightly is 100% effort. I want you to think about 30% effort here. So you're going to drop your chin straight down to your collarbone scrape your chin across to the right shoulder so you're looking over your right shoulder rotate your head and neck so that your right ear is facing your right shoulder now sweep your head straight back and rotate so that your left shoulder or your left ear is at your left shoulder rotate your chin down and around now, if you felt any discomfort there as you closed your angle, so on the narrow side of the angle, I want you to avoid discomfort there. So don't go into closing angle pain. And we're going to repeat that. So chin down, scraping across, ear rotates towards the right shoulder all the way up. Create a rainbow on the sky with your chin as you go across. Left ear drops towards left shoulder. Rotate your face down so you're looking down past your left shoulder scraping across the center. Repeat in the opposite direction. Scrape across to the left shoulder. Rotate so your chin and eyes and face straight up. Sweep across the back. Right ear to right shoulder. All the way down in front. One more time. Again, if you feel pain in the narrower angle here, you just move out of it. Move to a less of a tight angle so that you're no longer feeling pain. So 
that closing angle pain is something you want to avoid and get treated if you're experiencing it. Coming back up to center. So that was a neck controlled articular rotation. Another great tool you can use every day uh, to keep your neck in great shape. And I teach those in my Joints for Life class. Okay, so moving from the cars, we're actually going to do some rolling. So the rolling is really nice to do. You can use yoga tune-up balls or a pair of tennis balls. We're going to also need a yoga block for this. So we're going to start by rolling at the back of the head and neck. So I'm going to show you where the balls will go. So you're looking again for that place where your skull meets um, your neck. That's a tender spot for many of us, certainly for me. So be gentle. If it is too much for your neck to lie down on this, you can always do it against a wall or you can put a blanket or towel on your yoga block to soften the balls a little bit. Do not use a super hard ball. This is about talking gently to your nervous system, not about rubbing yourself until you get rid of the lumps. All right, so balls behind the back of your neck, right at that seam where your skull meets the rest of you. Let your chin nod down and just relax here for a minute. I like to bend my knees and let them rest each other, against each other here. You're looking for a, a very comfortable position. Take a few deep breaths. See if you can ask your neck muscles to relax here. Breathe into the back of your neck and out. One more time. Big deep breath in. And then from here, you can start turning your head gently to the right and the left. So you're just rotating the base of your skull, letting the balls kind of caress the bottom of your skull, looking for any tender spots that you can find, and just asking for those to relax and release as well. It's like you're shaking your head to say no, no more pain. No more discomfort, just relaxing. And then you could also add some head nods very gently, pulling your chin down and up. Yes to relaxation, yes to gentleness. Super nice. And as you're doing this, you're always listening to your body. Don't go anywhere that doesn't feel good for you. Always paying attention to what your body is telling you and always being in control. So if I do something that doesn't feel good to you, you don't do it. You just do what feels best for you. A couple more turns here. Super nice. And if you find a spot that feels especially like it needs some love, you can kind of turn your head and spend a little bit of extra time there. You can move the balls if you want to. I prefer them loose here, but they do tend to roll, so feel free to readjust them. So go ahead and find that extra tender spot if you have one and do a couple of nods right there. Maybe make your nose into a little circle. Follow that circle in both directions with your nose and let that be a circle of your skull on the ball. And then one more deep breath here and we're going to change it up. So the next place we're going to go is on the top backs of our shoulders on these places that get really tight when we have a lot of shoulder tension, often associated with neck tension and headaches. So you're still going to need your block. And here again, you get to choose how hard you want the pressure to be. So block can be flat, block can be high, block can be at a medium level. You can lean against a wall if any of those is too much. I'm going to show you lying down though. So starting again in that same position, but nothing behind the back of your head. You're going to place the balls behind those shoulder parts, right kind of where the collarbones meet the rest of you. Nestle them in there. And then take your block on whatever height you want to try. Maybe start with the middle height, but you can adjust it. And you're just going to place it underneath your sacrum, that big triangular bone at the base of your spine. And here... Again, you're just going to start by relaxing into the balls. See how that feels for you. See what you notice. Readjust if you need to. There's kind of a channel at the top and back of your shoulders that you want those balls to be in. It's usually, again, that tight sore spot that if someone gives you a massage there, it feels really awesome. Big breath into your shoulders. 
and release. Take that in. Using your breath here to ask for some relaxation into the balls. A lot of that held tension is being held by your brain feeling anxious. And what happens when we feel anxious is our bodies get tight and tense. So we're trying to be very gentle and ask our bodies if they feel safe to let go of that tension. To create a situation where our bodies can feel safe. So you really want to respect your body's signals here because that's how you're going to create change. It's never no pain, no gain. So one more breath here, and then we're going to start doing that same sort of style of rolling by going a little side to side. We're going to swish our shoulders against the balls, traveling the balls from our neck out towards the edges of our shoulders, feeling that whole top of the shoulder area, giving yourself a delicious massage, adjusting the balls however you need to, and finding your own spots because everyone's spots are different. And you can also do a few little chugs up and down. You can press into your feet to roll the balls back and forth across the tops of your shoulders. Super nice. And you're searching here again for any spot that feels especially like it needs some love. You don't want to go right into something if it feels uncomfortable, but if you do have a really sore spot, you can try going next to it and starting to ask those spots to relax kind of progressively. You want to zero in on it, always respecting those signals your body's giving you if it is telling you that something is too much for you right now. So I want you to find a good spot for you, and I want you to rest there. And from here, what you're going to do is you're going to shrug. Pull your shoulders up towards your ears, shrug into the ball, Create some pressure, and then ah, let that all go. Melt. So nice. And again, shrug into the ball. And melt it all out. One more time. Shrug up and into the ball. And then ah, melt it all out big arm circle here. Now the balls aren't going to move, but your arms are going to move and you're going to notice that changes the pressure against the ball. Again, adjusting if you need to, but also exploring what happens if you bring your arms forward out to the side. Let your arms be relaxed like big pieces of giant seaweed and just float them all around to change the sort of the, the position of your shoulder fibers against the ball. Ball doesn't move, shoulder fibers do. Big seaweed arms. Try crossing your arms in front of you, both directions. Nice big sweeping arm movements. Should feel hopefully really delicious. It does for me. If it doesn't for you, then back off a little bit and see if you can do something that makes it feel better for you. more times. The nice thing about this is you don't have to do it for very long. A couple of minutes should be plenty. You don't want to overdo it either because you're not a piece of Play-Doh. And then moving your block off and moving your balls away and getting them up to the side. So hopefully your muscles are pretty relaxed now and once you're in a nice, relaxed, loosened up state, it's always good to start doing a little bit of work. So the work we're going to be doing is some isometric work, which is my favorite for the neck because it's very safe and gentle. I'm going to sit on my block and we're going to use a strap to do this. You could also, however, use your yoga block to do this. So I'll actually show you both ways and I will not sit on my block at all. So. We're going to start from the front, and this is where that head ramping is really going to come into play. So you want to start by letting your ribs be soft and relaxed. You don't want to have really good posture here. You want to relax your ribs down, you want to ramp your head up, and keeping this position of your head and neck being tall through the spine, you're going to take your block and place it on your forehead in this long position to give you some room to work. And then you're going to put your hands on the far end of the block. So just hold the block there as gently as possible. 
we're going to start creating some work here. And I want you to think about dialing up the effort as though you were dialing up the volume dial on a stereo. So you're going to go very smoothly and very slowly from 0% up to 100% of your safest effort. So don't go to a place that doesn't feel good to you. You're going to just dial it up nice and slowly. So you're going to start creating some effort without moving. So starting to press the block into your forehead, forehead into your block at 10%, 20, 30, 20. Pressing the forehead in, 50. Feeling some effort now. I'm feeling it right deep in the front of my neck. And I also feel some work in the back, like behind that skull area. It's 70, 90. 100% of your maximum safe effort here. Keeping the rest of yourself relaxed by continuing with some nice deep breaths, but working into the block. Isometric, which means you're creating force without creating movement. That's why it's so safe. You're not pulling any of your parts relative to the other ones. This is a good exercise for decreasing pain as well. Isometrics are very analgesic. Holding here. You're safe 100%. One more breath. And then gradually relaxing and releasing. So good. All right. Now this is where I'm going to go back to sitting on my block and switching to the strap, but you can use the block for any of these if you prefer. So yoga strap now around the back of my skull. I'm thinking about ribs down, head ramped, and we're going to do that same slow dial up of the work effort. You are gradually pulling the strap, but not allowing your head to go along for the ride. If I let go of tension in my head, my head would fall forward because I am pushing backwards against the pull forward of the strap. Isometrics look absolutely ridiculous and they feel ridiculous and they're not the most exciting exercise ever, but they are so incredibly effective and awesome and feel so great afterwards. They are absolutely one of my favorite tools for neck goodness. Again, 60% now. Holding here and then release. A fair bit of effort, just your hands if you need to. Two more breaths. Slowly relax that down, let go of the tension slowly, still dialing, maybe dialing faster, but Still a nice, smooth release of tension. All right, so forward and back, we are also going to go side to side. This is, again, really nice with the strap, but also you can do with the block. Strap goes out to the side. You're going to imagine dropping your right ear to your right shoulder, but you're not going to allow that to happen. Ribs are down. Ribs are not moving side to side. Chin is tucked. Head is ramped up. And you're going to just start creating little bit of tension with your strap, dialing that dial, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, dialing up, 70, 90, 100. If I was to cut my strap, my head would flop over the ground. a lot of effort and my arm is shaky. But that's okay, it's an exercise class. I usually try to hold for about five breaths. I can definitely overdo this. One time I tried to hold for two minutes at a time and I was super sore the next day. So you know, there's no magic to how long you hold for, but don't overdo it. And then undialing the tension nice and smoothly. Practicing creating and letting go of tension is a good skill to have because a lot of us do hold tension 
unnecessarily. And so the more you're in touch with your ability to create and let go of tension, the more you're going to be able to control that in yourself. A nice relaxing breath. And now you're going to start imagining dropping that left ear towards your left shoulder and not allowing that to happen. You're resisting the strap. Creating that tension. 30%. Head is still ramped here, your chin is tucked, your ribs are not only dropped, but they're also not sliding to the side. Do this in front of a mirror if you can so you can watch what's happening with your ribs and give you a little bit more information. 60, 70, 90, 100 of your maximum safe effort. Just readjust here. So good. All right. So we're going to take that and we're going to add one more uh, piece. This one is a little bit more work. Lying down flat on the ground here. Knees are bent. Feet are flat on the ground. We're going to do a little work for the deep neck flexors in the front of the neck. These muscles don't get used a lot. And um, often people find it really helpful once they start to kind of reconnect with them and get them a little stronger. So... I want you to put your hands on your belly just below your ribs, and I'd like you to relax your belly as much as possible. You don't want to start using your abs here. You want to be thinking about your neck, and that means that you may not travel very far in this exercise. You might not even travel your head up at all um, because a lot of us compensate for our neck with our abs. So try ramping your chin a little bit to tuck your chin and then bring your head forward any amount. And notice if doing that made your abs turn on. So here my abs are turned on. So I have to relax back down. And then I'm just going to gently lift my head up. And notice if I can do that without my abs turning on. And here is a better place for me. So find your own spot where you can, it's basically just ramping that head up. It's coming forward at that 45 degree angle. But using the deep neck muscles to do it and not the abdominal muscles. And now folding here. And it's Quite a lot of work. You might be able to hear that in my voice. Belly is soft and relaxed still. Whew. So just kind of balancing out the muscles on the, uh, the front of the neck to go with the muscles on the back of the neck here. Keep tucking the chin down. Think chin tuck and you'll really be able to engage those deep front of the neck muscles. And then letting your head relax down and taking a little break. It's way harder than it looks, right? Okay, we're going to do that one more time. Chin tucks a little bit and lift and tuck at the same time, keeping the work in the neck and not in the front of the belly. Keep working to tuck the chin. You'll really feel those, neck, those flexors kick in. Whew. And from here, how about just turning your head to the right a little bit and turning your head to the left a little bit. And I don't know about you, but my neck is already burning. So we're just going to do one more turn to the right, one more turn to the left, back to center, relax that down. That's plenty. And we're going to finish up with another round of the neck cars. That's going to help integrate all the work that we've done into the rest of our day, into the rest of our body, and uh, just kind of be a really good way to, um, to just even things out. So ribs are down, chin tucks. Drop your head, sweeping your chin towards the left shoulder, rotating your chin up, sweeping your head back and around, right ear towards right shoulder, look down at the ground, sweeping around, scraping across your collarbones with your chin, left ear down, all the way back, not letting your ribs follow, right ear down, rotate down, look at the ground back to the front and reverse right side here right 
here to the shoulder, look to tuck it around, big rainbow with your chin, left ear to left shoulder, looking down the ground, and scraping down and around one more time, up, remembering with the cars, you're moving with some amount of effort, there's a little bit of resistance that you're creating with your muscles, and always avoiding that closing angle pain. Okay. That feels awesome. I hope your neck feels really good too. This is my go-to routine. We do it pretty much every day, especially if uh, we've been doing a lot of driving or computering with that sort of tendency for our necks to go forward. I uh, Remember the takeaways here you can do every day are head ramping and the neck cars, both awesome exercises. If you enjoyed this, definitely please like it, share it, and check out my website, petrofishermovement.com, to get way more awesome information on movement and exercises for wellness. Thanks so much for joining me.